I uh, I uh, I got caught smoking weed at Universal Studios. I had my girl bring my kid away, and I was outside of the Jurassic Park. I didn't get caught by like the police but i was outside of the jurassic park ride and i was like all right you know bring him to go get a soda or whatever i'm, I'm gonna sit here and smoke my vape pen and uh there's like one of the handlers they have a, a thing where they have a, a velociraptor it's like a person in a costume but it's like an mm -hmm. animatronic costume yeah. and they're pretending to be like a, a velociraptor and the uh the trainer's like trying to calm him down it's a whole display with the kids and everyone's really excited so i'm just like kind of watching it like getting stoned zoning out and at one point the girl's got like one of those you know uh, microphone face pieces on she just goes she goes sir not here <laughs> and that was it and i went uh and then i just sir not here faded you off into the distance addict. i know i wonder if they're cooler about it now no this is a year ago oh this is not that long ago wow i was very surprised i was like this is california well not only that what would it what, what if it was a vape pen with tobacco or cbd or are you allowed to do that probably not i think there's smoking areas that are designated but she mm. knew what it was she saw my face Mm, <laughs> I yeah, was my my mouth was agape watching real velociraptors walk mm. around. I was losing my mind. It was awesome, dude. I'm like get out of here, stoner. Yeah, I was listening to the radio in Utah, and they were talking about how they have to uh, re uh, they have to figure out what to do with their drug sniffing dogs now. <laughs> Because there's no reason there for There must them. be some. Is there a change in Utah? Is Utah changing their uh, their drug policy? Because it was funny this, listening to this old dude on, just for the for the fuck of it, I was listening to AM radio, yeah. talk radio, and this old dude was talking about how they, uh, they're they going to decommission some of these drug-sniffing dogs because they'd use them on the, like traffic stops. There we go. Medical marijuana in Utah could mean retirement for generation of drug canines. <laughs> just fucking putting <laughs> these dogs down. Well, they also were worried about the police officers themselves losing jobs. Like you, you, when you hear about pot that's making its way into a place like Utah, you know, first of all, you realize, goddamn, pot is really you can't stop it. It's now. here. The genie's out of the bottle. It's here. The revenue's <clears throat> in. Grandma feels better. Yeah. You know, the, the Alzheimer, the people that have all these serious issues that CBD is fixing, yeah. arthritis patients. People with like real problems that are not finding any other solution that works the way cannabis does, they're just giving in, and then they're making all this money. But then you see these old folks that are from a different time, and they're talking about it, and they they look at it in terms of like how many police jobs are going to go away, right. how many dogs are going to be. Well, none of them smoke weed, so they're exactly. like, it's not really my problem. But it's and interesting to watch them look at it as an economic issue. The problem is you have potheads that are leading the charge, so it's it, for a right. long time it was difficult to take them serious. Yeah, you Still needed is. you needed straight lace guys to come in, and you know now there's a lot of money there. There's so much money in it that you're getting that. But when you have fucking hippies playing hacky sack and yeah. you know wearing puka shell necklaces, it's sort of hard to take them seriously. When the reality is they kind of want it to be legalized for recreational purposes, and you know, yeah, I, I don't like for I don't I don't use we. That doesn't try. I do I do take CBD. I do, literally during that fight I was using topical CBD the whole time. Um, so I guess do you take oral too. I do. I take CBD uh, excellent daily, but I don't know. Infinite CBD sponsors our, our podcast and, and oh, the festivals. Well, they're also I, I'll get you a bunch of products because they're a really great company that supports comedy. They they sponsored my tour when I was preparing for my special. They're fucking dope. But um, I take it daily. I take the the oil um, just because you know apparently all of the the benefits that it has with getting your body back into homeostasis and making you feel better and getting back in line. I don't know the fucking effects. I smoke weed every day as well, so I'm sure I'm getting CBD effects as well. But in my mind, I'm going, well, I have a bunch of this stuff. I know that since I started taking it, I weirdly feel better, but I can't really connect. You said before you take CBD and you go into another realm. Well, I was taking one and one. It's like one gram of CBD to one gram of, of THC. Like it's uh, it's one part. So whatever milligrams you have, it's both, like if it's 10 milligrams CBD, it's 10 milligrams of weed as well. It's potent. Yeah. But I, I take regular CBD too, though. I take oil. I feel like it's uh, it's very beneficial and much more potent in terms of its anti-inflammatory benefits than just smoking it. Smoking it does something for you. It definitely reduces inflammation, makes you feel better. It's I good was taking for, like, the, sore joints. The but, topical I was using. Topical is good too. Yeah. I, but I think the real combination is topical plus uh, the oil. You don't have to take, but people. A lot of people find that. They have better pain relief from one versus one plus one, like one part THC, one part. So it's like edible, like you know, marijuana, 
mixed with CBD. A lot of people find great benefit in that for some reason. Yeah, I had to trick my aunt because my aunt's so anti-drugs. Mm. And if I told her that CBD was derived from hemp, she would she wouldn't take it. But she has bad arthritis, and I gave it to her for uh, for that, and she loves it. And then I told her after the fact, but it's great. I mean, dude, uh, it's uh, just a plant, folks. And and if you just get straight CBD, it has no psychoactive properties. There's yeah. no, it's not going. The only thing it's going to do is for some folks, and it works a little bit that way with me. It alleviates some anxiety, just relaxes you. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, that's why I smoke weed too. Yeah, I smoke, and I've I've been arrested probably ten times in my life, and every time was for smoking a joint in the street. Psst. Every single time, dude. When they arrest you, they take you in. Yeah, New York, doggy. <sighs> in a fucking cell. It's crazy. Still, still? they're still doing. The that? last time I was put into a cell for smoking weed was like a year and a half ago. Me and Dave Smith, two years ago maybe. Me and Dave. Did you Smith, tell them you were Louis J. Gomez? I told him Louis Gomez. That's when I started using the middle initial. I was like, you know what? This problem. I learned, I learned you a lesson. I learned a lesson. You fucking Louis Gomez as much have rap sheets? Doggy. Uh, when <laughs> I go to the airport, every time I come back into the country, I am pulled into a room and they yeah. fucking, they look like they're about to yeah. fist fuck me with a rubber glove. Every time. Have you been to Panama any time recently, sir? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> come right this way. Every single Spend time. Any time in Bolivia, sir? But yeah, dude, when in New York City, the way it works is you... It's, uh, dude, it sucks. Oh, it's happened so many times. It's the worst because it's just a major inconvenience. Yeah. Pain in the ass to get into Canada. I can do it now because they changed the laws, but I didn't go to Canada for like three years because of weed. For being arrested for a joint. We're not mm. talking about like I have an ounce that I just bought from my dealer and they found a large amount on me. A joint smoking on the street, what they do is they... they at first, they... They take the weed and they go, all right, we're just going to give you a ticket. Just hang tight, relax. We're just going to put cuffs on you. This is just to keep you calm and just to fucking get you in the paddy wagon. This is all a process. Mm. Then they put you in a paddy wagon. They used to have sweet nights in New York where all it was was they would go and try to find kids smoking weed, kid, drunk kids, college kids pissing in public, public intoxication. And the entire night, they would just pick up everybody and fill up paddy wagons and create criminals. Just create criminals out of teenagers, you know, and they were targeting. This is why the stop and frisk laws happened in New York. They changed it because they were just targeting black and Hispanic kids. Mm.